a sport because the sport involves our bodies and we have to train our bodies and we practice the art we practice it because we have to continually humble ourselves and practice and practice and practice because you never master and when I keep that as a balance it enables me to be 51 and still occasionally jump in and compete I still practice the art, and I'm constantly humbled and learn more new cool shit. I go to Hickson's class a lot and learn just little tweaks that blow me away. Egan Machado's an encyclopedia of moves. You can ask him something, oh yeah, we did this and this way. A lot of the new guys are doing it this way, blah, blah. And so that's the learning journey is the art. It's always the being soon. And then the street is way my childhood insecure paranoid brain that's always existed in me still is there that I always think well how effective would this be in a street where is in relation to my age and athletics would this involve in a reality about that guy wants to hurt me kind of fight and then when we analyze what what it takes to say be a champion in whatever martial art we do, reality arts. I have known guys, there's what I call the, the trifecta of the champion, which is talent, self-discipline, and passion. And I've seen guys who've got all the talent in the world, but no self-discipline. And they try to make that up with talent and passion. Passion will only go so far. If you become burned out, that's when you have to I have to go. I may, I'm, I'm gonna show up no matter what. I'm gonna bring my ass so the mind will fall up. I don't convince my mind that I have to go. You just go, and then your mind is there, and then when you're being choked and attacked, your body will fall, right? Talent is one of those things that's wonderful if you have. We all have some amount of it, but it only goes so far. From talent alone, you can go from white to the purple belt. Even purple belt world champion from talent alone and passion. And then comes the humbling phase of, of okay, I gotta address my weaknesses and not just ride on my strengths anymore. And for, for the, the talented, that can be a big ego blow. For the aging athlete, that's the ego blow. Now that I'm the aging athlete, like I remember being in my early 40s and realizing that no one says anymore, wow, you're fast. But I heard that all the time when I was young, God, you're fast. Wow, you're acrobatic, whatever it is. All of a sudden, that wasn't there anymore. And I, then I would overhear it in the room with some younger blue belt who's spinning around doing in inverted triangles and, and thinking, okay, how do I adjust my game for where I am in life? And then earlier, Mitch and I were talking about this, which is coaching and but competing at the same time. And how do you balance that? And uh, there's a lot of mental gymnastic tricks that I've done and Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And here's the bottom line. Let's say I'm in a, the wrong place in my head for whatever reason. I'm filled with, with anxiety, fear, apprehension. And I win. I'm going to forget that, that, that I have all that. I can be in the mental right place, have a good match, but lose, and think there was something wrong with the way I thought or trained. And that's part of the 
mental game is ultimately to condense this all in a short one line thing is when you uh, uh, compete down to war, fight, whatever it is, is my only job is, is to provide my opponent with the best fight that I can possibly give to make him wait to, to, to where you have the attitude out there. I'm going to not, not, I don't have to win, but I have to fight my best fight. So you remove that outcome result oriented thing away. There is no half but to win. But I do have to fight my best fight. My absolute best fucking fight. I have to employ my best jujitsu that I possibly can. And leave the results to the universe or God or whatever you want to believe in. That's the attitude. Is that an easy attitude? No, of course it's not. Because we fear two things, and we really fear them huge. We fear the unknown and shame. That's why it's always easier to grab each other in here and roll than to step out on a mat where there's this huge crowd, even though they're hardly even watching us. They're watching what's happening over on Mount One, or they're texting, or they're whatever it is. They're not really that concerned about you, but our egos think they're watching us. So we put all the pressure on us, and because it's unknown, we fear it. So it's, it, 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 it's that combination of the unknown and shame. That's what, we, it, it's not injury. There's no purple and up who actually fears like, God, I might walk out there and get my arm broken. That's not what scares us. Even really MMA, that's not what, what scares any pro MMA guy. It's we fear looking bad. We don't want to look bad. So that's why guys drop out or pull out of the competition. It's also why we don't do our best. Because at least if we don't do our best, we give our ego an excuse. Well, I didn't really but train all that hard up to the fight, and I was a little out of shape, and I was in a coaching mode, or whatever it is. We give ourselves an out ahead of time. So when we lose, we won't feel as bad in our egos. I've done that one too. I've given myself an out before I've stepped on the back. Because I'm thinking that's important if I win or lose. And that's not what's important. What's important is that I get the best fight that I can possibly give and leave the results up to God that I don't believe in. But I'll say that. And as Egan Annoy says, 